Hey everyone and welcome to the Parrot Bros. Today we're going to be doing a video on rear control arms. That's adjustable and fixed arms. And we'll go into some of the details as why you need them, what they do, and what should happen if they break. So before we get stuck into it, let's jump into the intro. Guys, if you're new to the channel, we have a playlist specifically for Audi TTs, which I'll put up in the top right hand corner now. And that has over 20 videos of how-to guides, things to check, modifications, upgrades, and plenty more great TT stuff. So be sure to check that out. And if you're already a subscriber, welcome back. Now let's get stuck into it. Okay, so let's talk rear control arms. Now, there are four arms on the back of a Quattro TT, and their role is simply suspension. It's to do with the travel up and down of the wheel. Now, on a standard stock height car, the wheels uh, will stand vertical um, with the car at approximately between zero and one degree camber now the wheels on this car as it has been lowered approximately 40 millimeters they sit on the left hand side is almost three and a quarter degrees which is quite a lot if you look at the video you can see the angle in which the, the rear wheel is sitting which will cause um, wear on the tire not to mention obviously you have less tire on the ground so therefore lesser handling um, now this is on just on shocks and springs, um, lowered springs, shortened shocks with the standard non-adjustable control arms or tie arms or whatever you want to call them. Um, so that is the effect of lowering it has on them. Now let's go into the other options. So you can see in this video the two arms that I am discussing is this arm here and this arm here. Now, these are fixed. If you look, they have a, a bush inside on this side, and on the other side, they are a fork. I'll, um, I'll pop a picture up showing me what they look like um, as a standard arm, so you get the idea. Um, but basically, on this side, let me zoom in so you get a better look. <clears throat> so that's the, the rear diff and uh, Haldex system. Now here, you can just about see that black part, that's the bush. And for argument's sake, if you look on my car, it's probably happened in the past, because if you look, the two on the right hand side are very rusty and look like they've been on the car for the full duration. Whereas if we go onto this side and I swap the light across, you can see that the lower arm is in a far superior condition compared to everything else. So the likelihood is at some point in its lifespan that it's it has broken one of the arms. I've been given a couple of pictures to show you what it looks like when this should break. Um, I'll pop a picture up. Thanks for the guy who has provided them to me. Um, and this shows you what the arm looks like when it snaps and what it looks like on the outside. Now, he had some cheap aftermarket um, tie control arms on, which you can purchase on eBay for about £120. And they're made out of a inferior product the welding isn't great the strength of it isn't particularly good and over time it has broken down now i plan to use the cookbot or paul cook cb auto um, control arms they weigh four times what the ebay ones do they're made out of a much stronger material and they are a lot more heavy duty they've been proven i think he's had them on a car since 2014 and besides the coating on the outside sort of wearing they are still exactly the same shape. They haven't deformed, they haven't damaged or any other problems. Um, so there's, there's two options. I mean, if you were to not lower your car, but you were worried that your arms look like mine and the bushes could be seized, is you can take the arms off, get them cleaned up, get the welds checked and replace the bushes. That will give you another 10, 15 years on them. Or should you want to, you can drop them all off, replace like fix two, give them a, a clean up, change the bushes, and then you can buy two adjustable ones. So if you're going to lower it, and the likelihood is you're gonna change the camber, you can then have two adjustable ones, which for argument's sake can be put on the top or the bottom. I'll put them on the bottom because they're easily accessible um, for adjustment. Um, and basically just adjust them to suit so that the wheels sit vertical with the body of the car. So therefore you get more tire on the tarmac and you're less likely to wear the tires out. That is the best end result. So I'll try and uh, give you a bit of a close up now of what the bushes look like so you can get a better idea. 
just so you know really what to look for. I mean, these have done, the car's done 183 or 4,000. Um, and like I said, the top on the left and both the, the right hand side arms look to be original. So I'll try and get a close up of the bushes. You might even see that they're starting to split, I don't know. So, okay guys, so what I've actually found is, I haven't found any specific damage. However, you can see, try and get the light in a better place. You can see there's quite clearly metal missing um, where it's obviously breaking down the layers. And I've actually found that the bush is completely split, both sides. So that will pretty much be doing absolutely nothing for me. Um, the upper one, it's easy, specifically easy to see, but the bushes again are absolute garbage. Um, but yeah, so that's that side. Now this side, the bush is actually all right because obviously it's not a million years old. Um, you can see there the bush is in all right condition. So that arm is probably all right. It's probably not seized. Whereas the likelihood is the bushes on this one has probably failed and it's seized. And that's why it's destroying the bush first. I so want to show you now exactly what you're going to have on your car. Now, luckily for me, these arms, um, I haven't taken the bushes out yet. So you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, now, these are usually what fails. Now, these, um, it's got the later and the earlier bushes in. Now, these top ones are rose jointed and the bottom ones are simply just rubber bushes. They're like a, a later change as the rose joints fail. Now, what I'll show you is if obviously you can test it. Um, what it will do normally is, let me just grab an arm, is at the fork end, which is usually the part that snaps, that will normally sit like that around there uh, and the other half will be mounted to your um, subframe at the back and obviously that the fork moves up and down on this bush and it also allows a bit of movement around now that is usually what the cause of the problem is now i've got a, a podgy here i'll just stick this in to give you an idea of movement as you can see as it's a rose jointed ball it should have a very amount of movement now what i've heard and what i've seen um, from people on the the net and um, obviously personal experience as well is that these rose joints can seize they can actually jump out of their the race housing as well and then go either side which obviously cause problems but they could seize solid and if they seize and they don't allow for up and down movement or side to side movement so as you're obviously if you imagine if that's bolted in solid as that's doing this and doing that and whatever it's doing the movement it's got from uh, the way you're driving it will seize and what it will do is it will start to deteriorate now these forks i don't know how well you'll be able to see on the camera but they are quite thin they're only i believe 1.5 mil um it's quite hard to show you specifically but you can see they're not they're not particularly thick so that is why people want to check them i mean these are in a first class standard apart from being a bit grubby they only come off a car that done seventy thousand miles and we just stuck some um poly bushes in they just need to be pressed in a little bit more before we fit them but um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be replacing these um, for some polybush replacements. Now, uh, the ones I've gone for are Strong Flex. You can buy any brand. Um, you can buy the the later ones, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but these ones I've got are oh, it's stuck in there. But basically, they are uh, a power a polybush one, and all they do is push in like that. And then you push this metal dowel through the center, which then gives you that replacement. And that will allow for the movement instead of the rose joint. Now, let me flip this arm over and I'll show you the other one. Try and get it as best you can see it. Okay, yeah, you can see that there. So that is, this one is literally just a rubber bush. So it's a metal sleeve, rubber outside, a metal skin on the side. And all that does is this still allows a little bit of movement but it's a lot tighter. Obviously this is a rubber bush. So there's a lot less give um, to give you a more tighter feel. Um, and that is the sort of the later, they call, I think they call it a, a later version, but an improved version of the other one. Now, I don't particularly like them because it's sort of six to one and a half a dozen the other. The rose joint ones are very good. However, after a amount of time, obviously they get dirt and they can seize. And these ones don't have a lot of give, whereas at least with the polybush ones, they've got a bit of give, but they're also quite firm. So it's sort of like somewhere in the middle. Um, but so what you want to do is if you want to look on your car and check yours, your own, usually I've seen the bottom ones fail more than the top. Um, I guess it's probably just because they get more dirt, uh, more flick up off the road. So 
pretend for example this is the bottom you can just look under your car and have a look at the condition of this and like i said before jack the wheel up and if you can see that the arms move in and it's not putting stress on this ideal if you can take it off and just put a bolt in and give it a, a move backwards and forwards like we did on the other rose joint then even better you can prove that it's nice and smooth there's no um, tightness it should be able to get a full varied motion um, but yeah so that is what you're looking at <coughs> looking for for failures you want to be that's what you'll see if you look underneath and then you'll have that like that and then you'll have the same arm at the top as well so that is what you will see on the underside of your car and what fails so you want to look at the forked end and you want to see if you look for any any kind of damage any twisting any bending any pieces of metal missing any loads of rust etc um, but yeah that is what you are looking at the two bushes top and bottom there and just while i'm in the shed guys i thought i'd show you the cookpot um, arms as well now as you can see the makeup of them let's get a bit of image let me grab the standard one as well so you can see there the thickness difference between the two um, it's four times five times thicker um, in the fork wall so you can see it's a lot stronger and the welds on these are very very good um, let me get some light on this you can see a bit better so you can see there that the weld is penetrated all the way around the tube. Um, same on the other side as well. It's quite hard to do one-handed. <laughs> but yeah, and it is made out of a real good thickness um, pipe. You can see very good quality large threads. Um, it is awfully heavy of a good construction. And it's a lot better than the eBay option. I'm not saying the eBay option you shouldn't buy, but... Based on the failure rate, um, one of these has never ever failed, whereas the eBay ones I have seen a few. And for the extra sort of 60 or 70 quid, I would rather be doing 70 or 80 miles an hour, or some even more. Um, and obviously if it's going to fail, I would rather put my money in the slightly bigger one. So a bit of food for thought when you're going to be lowering your car. Uh, now the underside of my car is a bit like a submarine. Um, looks like it's been in a lot of salty water for quite a bit of time now we're actually replacing um, the whole rear subframe all the arms we're replacing basically everything underneath now um, I've actually been cleaning these um, knuckles up today ready to to do the swap out even particularly great bolt heads we need to do the brake pipes um, we're going to re replace in the knuckle Let's look at the brake shield what's left of it there's hardly any brake shield left um, um so yeah this is all coming off because so i don't know how much metal is actually left on it it's quite a bit missing and all the bushes are scrap um so it seems like the right thing to do but what i've been trying to do is get everything ready so we can do it all at once because obviously there's quite a lot of bolts involved in doing a swap over and uh it's quite expensive i mean we're going to cost in a separate video when we do the video for it but you can imagine if each bolt is some of the bigger bolts are five or six pounds each and we're going to be replacing 30 or 40 bolts it does get quite expensive and plus the bushes uh, and all the other parts involved so that is if you're thinking about lowering it or considering about lowering it that is what i would certainly look into and also if your car's done a bit of mileage and you haven't seen in the history that it's had any arms changed and you want to have a good good look at it the easiest thing to do is actually get it jacked up if you can is jack the car up let me just put the camera back and i can talk you through it a bit better so if you can jack the car up get it on axle stands at the back and then if you get either a long pry bar or a, a scaffold bar or something long that you can get someone to lift the wheel up and down or get a trolley jack or a whiny jack or something and just basically you want to lift the rear wheel up and down whilst it's not touching the floor and see if you can see the physical arms moving and the bushes doing their job if they're not moving and it looks like it's forcing the arm and not the bush then i would certainly get them replaced before they break and if you're considering lowering it i would 100 percent recommend getting the adjustable arms um, for obviously the reasons we discussed with the angle of the wheels and for the lifespan of the bushes it's worth doing um, the arms from Paul Cook, I believe, are about £190. I'll pop a link down below in the comments. 
Um, so you can see that information where I've, all the bushes are. I'll, I'll even put the part numbers for the, the standard arms and the standard bushes and everything you'll need. So just jump into the description below. All the information will be down there as always. Um, if you've got any questions, jump into the comments. I'll be more than happy to try and answer it, find you any part numbers you need or anything like that as we can. As I really love the TT community, everyone I've spoken to, really nice, really friendly, really helpful. And it's great to see these cars still on the road and doing everything they should be. So guys, thanks again for watching. That's another video from the Parrot Bros. See you next time.